Hello again, this is Daniel with another Book of the Week review. This week we're reviewing an interesting title by the author Stuart Wilde. It's a book called Silent Power, and it actually comes as part of this uh, three-volume set with some other books that Stuart wrote. It's a great little book, a uh, very spiritual type book, something a bit different to what we've reviewed before. And uh, I spent a bit of time the last week reviewing this book, read it a couple of times in the past, and uh, trying to get some of the essence of what it's about so I can share with you today. Silent Power is built on the idea that there's this etheric energy that every person has about themselves. It's kind of like an aura, if you like, something that surrounds each person as an individual. And we tend to kind of emit a certain type of energy as a person based on the way we feel about ourselves, the way we truly feel inside. Now, if you're not a spiritual person, this might sound kind of crazy and, and very, you know, a half-baked type theory. But the more you think about it, it's, it's very often quite easy to be able to think about how someone feels when you're talking to them. You can tend to tune into it quite well. And if you've ever had that experience of someone, you know, kind of crowding you or seeming to dominate you with emotion, you, you really can tune into that etheric feeling that Stuart Wilde talks about. Silent power comes from within. We all have a choice in how we feel and how we react in the world. And really it's up to us if we want to be powerful or we want to be weak. And a big part of this comes from the idea of the ego. The ego is basically built around the idea of the here and now. We want things, we think that we want to be a certain type of person, we want to have certain things in our life. And the ego is very much a quick instant gratification thing. It wants things, it wants to feel a certain way, it wants to appear, you know, professional or successful or have fame or recognition, whatever it is. And those ideas tend to sit, you know, very, very strongly in our minds because our whole society is basically driven to cater to the ego. And it's really up to us whether we want to, as a person, be living in that kind of world. Silent Power is really going against that and saying, you know what, where you are right now, who you are as a person is good. Who you are is complete. And anything outside and above and beyond that isn't necessary. So when you think about that, I mean, obviously, you know, you do need to eat, you do need to exist and have a home and that kind of thing. So, I mean, there are, there are basic physical desires and needs that you have. But really, when you think about it in its essence, that's very true. You don't necessarily need a lot of the things that tend to drive you, that you feel like you need a lot of the time. And so when you get into that, that mindset of thinking, you know, I'm complete where I am right now and I'm okay, you start to get a sense of what silent power is about. Now that sounds like a great idea that we can quiet our ego and we can be calm and spiritual and just live in this kind of abundant mentality, but the reality is that life kind of gets in the way. And this is where silent power is a very powerful idea because it's really up to us to decide how we behave and how we react in the moment. So the first concept that we talk about in this book is the idea of psychological leaning which is something that's very very powerful once you start to understand it and the idea of leaning comes from something he talks about in the book very early on the idea that when you're actually walking as a person what you're actually doing is falling forward in a controlled way which is quite interesting when you think about it as you learn to work walk you actually fall forward and learn to kind of step before you fall completely well people tend to in their lives do the exact same thing when they want something they tend to fall forward towards it in a, in a sense he calls it leaning we actually lean into the things we want and very often we do this in a very desperate way we tend to lean into you know a certain deal that we want in business or we, we really crave the, the attention or we, we are attracted to someone we tend to desire them so we lean into that person and we tend to crowd them or the situation and what it does is it actually disempowers us because we're falling into that ego trap we're getting stuck in this mindset that we have to have something or we have to be something and that in itself is actually the opposite of silent power that's when we're, again we're getting stuck in that ego trap so the idea of psychological leaning is incredibly powerful and he says in the book that when you're in the situation where you feel yourself wanting something or craving something or desiring something you can remind yourself in the moment that you don't need it. You can actually take a step back or lean back if you like and actually say to yourself, you know what, whether or not I have this, it's okay. I'm okay where I am as a person and who I am and from here I can actually go for the things I want. The next concept that he talks about is the idea of silent talking. Now this sounds kind of, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really work as a, as a concept, the idea of silent talking. How do you talk when you're being silent? Well, what he's actually talking about is the idea that very often we all talk too much. You know, we have this tendency to kind of 
over talk and to talk to entertain ourselves. There's not a lot of value in what we're saying a lot of the time. And very often it's the same with other people. You know, if you've ever been in that situation where you're listening to someone and you're kind of just waiting for your turn to talk, well, the reality is that most other people are actually doing the same when you're talking. So the idea of silent talking actually goes against this completely and says stop trying to talk so much. Stop trying to entertain yourself with your own stories and own ideas. And don't worry about trying to impress other people with your knowledge or your experiences. Just be present to the moment. Be present to who they are as a person and listen more. Actually tune into who they are and how they're feeling, that etheric energy that they have, and just be comfortable with it. And the more you do this, the more you'll find that people tend to actually realize that you're actually quite a strong, powerful person because you're not spending your time trying to impress them or trying to lean on them in any way. You're actually quite content just being quiet, listening, not impressing or trying to dominate them in any way. Another great idea in the book is the idea of practicing what he calls non-action. And this is a very powerful concept, and it takes a little while to get used to. It's a very Zen-type concept. If you've ever read any Zen Buddhism-type books, this will be really sort of in tune with that idea. The idea is that very often we tend to um, crave things in our lives that are very material. You know, we want a certain object or we want a certain circumstance, something like that. And very often those things actually hold us back a lot of the time. They actually restrict us by having having too many possessions. The possessions end up owning us, that type of thing. So the idea of non-action is actually being very present to what you truly need in terms of your spiritual sense, not necessarily getting stuck just in the material or the you know the goals that you desire. And he talks about in the book the idea of plan itis. You know, a lot of people get stuck in this kind of perpetual planning of things in their life, looking for the next thing, the next goal, the next challenge, whatever it is. And so actually removing that a little bit and just being present to what it is that's really important, your work or your purpose if you like, which is a deeper concept, and actually slowly working towards that rather than constantly struggling for whatever it is that you desire in the moment, whatever those small things that will gratify that ego are. So the idea of non-action actually says, whenever you're hitting a challenge in your life, stop and say, okay, is there something here I need to learn at a deeper level? Is there a lesson? Is there something that I'm not actually taking away that I, I should be, that I should be tuned into at the moment, whether it's that it's the wrong circumstance or I'm not approaching this the right way or I have you know an ego need that I'm trying to gratify rather than actually achieving something that's truly important to me. So the idea of non-action actually says to step back a little bit, to be present first of all to the spiritual level of what you're trying to achieve and then from there actually moving forward in a calm flow state rather than in that struggle state. Another great idea in this book is the idea that our emotions are actually different to what we're taught. You know, we're, we're taught that a feeling is that, you know, kind of if, if someone sort of slaps you or something like that, you feel it. Well, very often that's a sensation. That's what he talks about. It's a, it's a physical sensation that we have. And what we think about as emotions, the, the, the things that we tend to feel, if you like, are actually just reactions. They're actually reactions to our ego telling us things or our personality telling us the way we should react and the way we should emotionally respond. And he actually talks about tuning into the, the higher level of consciousness, actually what you feel at a, you know, at a higher level as a person, rather than getting trapped in those sensations or in those reactions that happen in the moment. It's a very powerful idea, one that is very hard to notice when you're in a, in a difficult you know, mindset or you're struggling to actually be able to rise above the, the sensations or the feelings that you're having in the moment to the higher level of, of consciousness. But it's very, very powerful, and it actually gives you more of that silent power, being present to what's bigger out there in, in terms of your, your overall being. So this book is an interesting title. It's, it's Stuart Wilde is a very, you know, he's, he's a mystic type person. He's, he's a spiritual teacher. He's very well revered in a lot of sort of spiritual realms. And this book will take you on a bit of a trip. It's not your typical type book in terms of, you know, succeeding in business and life. It really looks at that higher plane of consciousness and what's out there. There's some very different concepts in here. When you're reading this book, I would warn you to, to go in with an open mind. Don't be trying to solve all the, the different concepts and ideas and, and think about them logically. Just sense where you're at as a person. It's a great book. It's a small book. It's only about 70 pages. You can read it several times. I have myself. Every time you gain something more out of it, well worth checking out. Silent Power by Stuart Wilde, a great read and will set you on a different plane. So check it out.